Hare Krishna, can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. All right. So we'll begin. All right. Am, am I the... Okay. You need to make me the host. Well, just, just two minutes. You have to make me the host. I want to share the screen. Oh, okay, Maharaj, yeah. So, uh, so I have already given some brief introduction of, uh, of Maharaj uh, to all of you. I hope all, all of you have heard. So I am just giving little brief which is uh, which is remaining. So as I was telling that huh, Srila Prabhupada had a desire to preach in, in uh, China and especially the communist countries where Krishna consciousness is practically banned. So it is very difficult to preach on those countries and people are very very degraded so they don't uh, take Krishna consciousness. But Maharaj taking with his life risk, huh? even in this such an advanced age, Maharaj is traveling different countries like China, Taiwan, and other communist, communist countries, Buddhist countries, Japan, also also Middle East, and many parts of India, Maharaj is traveling and, and preaching Krishna consciousness. Hmm? So, uh, so uh, Maharaj is very famous for his wonderful uh, Vaishnava qualities. Uh, like humility, tolerance, austerity, compassion. So, so, uh, so we are uh, very inspired by his Maharaj personal example in his own life. And uh, and same time, so Maharaj is very busy, uh, but still Maharaj uh, uh, took his time to give his valuable association. Last week Maharaj has given class to our senior boys, and this time we are getting association for all of you. So I thank Maharaj for giving his valuable time to all of us. So we'll welcome Maharaj by your traditional style by chanting three times Hari Bol. So I request everybody to stand one three time Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Okay, so we're late today, so no so time. No now time. I request Maharaj to. Sir. No time for speak, Kirtan. Uh, Maharaj, you can speak till twelve forty at least, Maharaj. We can hear you, and then you can take the question and answer, Maharaj. Okay. So, so uh, is it okay? So all of us, so all the devotees are requested to be with us till uh, one o'clock at least. So it is one hour ten minutes only. Uh, so Maharaj will speak uh, twelve forty, and then we have question answer. So we have the question answer list. So Maharaj already boys have given the question answer questions. So I, uh, so we can we have many questions. So we can uh, uh, means after twelve forty maybe uh, we can take the questions. If you are okay with that. Okay, Hare Krishna. Welcome. Can everyone see the screen? Are you able to see my my PowerPoint? Yes, yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, yes. You can, you can all see? Yes, Maharaj, huh? Huh? Yes, Maharaj, you are able to see. Oh, very good. Okay, so you can see the subject we're talking about. Uh, Right? Three modes of material nature. We're always working against the material nature. Maybe, maybe somebody needs to put the microphone off. If you have a lot of noise in the background, if you. Somebody's sound is coming. Yeah. Thank you. So we request the boys unmute yourself. Mute your sorry, mute yourself. <laughs> right? Okay. We'll just look on this first slide here. Three modes of material nature. And we put T R A P. You'll see why. You'll see what this means, what the T R A P is. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, so three modes of material nature described in the Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 14. Chapter 14 describing the three modes of material nature. We quote a verse, in the fourth verse. It should be understood all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature. And that I am the seed giving father. Right? Okay. So. Here you can see why we put T-R-A-P. Chapter 14 is put into three sections. The first section, the first nine verses. Everybody hearing okay? Yeah? yeah. Yes, yes. Sir. Okay, good. Yes, sir. Yes, the three modes, the first section is dealing with the three modes. And then, we go, then the, the chapter goes on to describe about how there's a race there between the modes. Everyone wants to be prominent. We all want to be the best, we want to be the biggest, we want to be the most famous, we want the most, we want to be the most, right? The best and the most. So that's described in Bhagavad Gita in verses 10 to 13. And then action in the modes. We'll hear about how we act in different modes, 14 to 18. And then the chapter finishes. Pure life. What is the pure life? So we're going to look at that. So the three gunas. I think you're all familiar with them. You can see the white, the yellow, and the red. Actually, got the colors a bit wrong here. It should be yellow for sattva, red for rajas, and blue or black for tamas. Anyway, the three modes, sattva, rajas, and tamas. Purity, passion, and activity, and ignorance. These are the three modes. This is what we're working against. We're always struggling with the modes of nature. Very powerful, right? Do you know why it's powerful? Why are the modes of nature very powerful? Anybody know? Yeah? Anybody knows what, why are the three modes very powerful? Nobody answer? No, Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay, because no, it, no, but this is Krishna's energy. Because it's Krishna's energy. It's his material energy. Right? Krishna's got different energies. And the three modes is dealing with the material energy or the Bahiranga Shakti. Right? And because it's Krishna's energy, it's very powerful, very difficult to overcome. Right? We're going to hear how to overcome the modes, how to get free of the three modes, the three gunas. You know the meaning of guna, right? What does guna mean? Quality. Guna means quality. Yes, but it also means rope, ropes, we're tied, we're tied up with these three ropes, sattvic, rajasic and tamasic. They've got us, they've got us, we're prisoners, we're under the control and they force, force us. Okay. So, okay, can you put your mic off, please? Haribo, can you put the mic off when you have a lot of talking in the background? Please put off the mic. So, the three modes, three influences. You can see the nice diagram here, picture done by the artist. Krishna conscious art. Above the modes, you've got Krishna. Krishna's the controller. And then you can see the modes. These three ladies, they're like 
they're controlling, they're pulling the strings, the different modes, the different gunas, just like puppets. We're the, we're the puppet and we are controlled by these different strings. The different, one string is sattvic, one string is rajasic, and one string is tamasic. They're controlling us. So when do they start acting on us? Do you have any appreciation? When do the modes start acting on you? Do you feel it? Reflect on the mood. What did you feel like this morning when you woke up? How did you feel? Sunday morning, a bit cold. You know, how do you feel when you wake up in the morning? Do you jump out of bed and start doing yoga asanas? rush into the cold shower. What do you do when you wake up in the morning? Immediately chant the holy name of Krishna <laughs> or what? You just roll over and go back to sleep. Right? We have different moods when we wake up in the morning. Sometimes we're feeling very enthusiastic. Sometimes we're very happy. Sometimes we're very passionate. We're a lot of desires and sometimes we're really lazy and we don't want to do anything and we feel tired. Different moods because different modes, sattva, rajas, tamas, these are the modes. So is the soul affected by the modes? What do you think? Is the soul going to be affected by the modes of nature? Yes. Wrong. No, it's not. No, sir. No, right. The soul is... Why not? Because the soul is what? Soul is different from body. Yeah, the soul is spiritual. Soul, soul is part of Krishna. Yeah, soul totally is... Totally spiritual. Right. And the modes are? Controlling the material elements, the material body, right? So we, you can see we put the box in the picture on the right there, right? Somebody, you can soul read... Soul is immortal, yes. You can read that for me? Soul is unaffected? Can you read that part? Soul is unaffected as it is spiritual, cannot be cut, etc. They only affect the subtitle and the gross body and will dedicate the experience in the world. Thank okay. you, sir. So we got a subtle and a gross body, right? Do you know what the, the subtle body is? What's the subtle body? Anybody Why know? Who speaks truth? Who speaks truth? Only. Subtle body, who speak, you say who speak the truth. Mm, no, it's not really the subtle body. We, it's, it's, it's just the, mind, intelligence and ego. Right, that's right, that's the answer, right? The mind, the intelligence and the ego. You know, we all have a mind, but uh, do you ever see the mind? Have you seen your mind? No, we never no, see. No, and you, we, know you have no. we know you have intelligence, but can you, say, can you take the intelligence out of the body and say, this is, this is my intelligence, this part is my intelligence? No, it's subtle. It's subtle means it's not manifest, unmanifest. But we have a, there's a subtle body and there's a gross body. Gross body is what you can see and what we use to perform activities with, right? That's a gross body. So we have these two kinds of body. We have a gross body, the one you see in the mirror, and then you have the subtle body. You can't really see it, but you feel it. You know you have a mind, you know you have intelligence, it's there, but it's not visible. And we have also one more body, we have a, a spiritual body. Where is the spiritual body? That's in the soul. The soul is a spiritual body, right? But the spiritual body is contained in a small particle of the soul. When we go back to the spiritual world, then the soul will manifest its spiritual body. At the moment, the spiritual body is contained 
with an, a tiny particle of spiritual energy. Okay? So we're learning about the body, the three modes of nature, and how they influence us. Now we talk about lifestyle, our lifestyle, and re-engineering. Any of you studying engineering? No? <laughs> yeah. So Krishna consciousness is a way of life. Yeah, it's a way of life. We, we need to have some way of living. We need to have some proper guidance how to live in this world. So we learn from Krishna how to live our life, what way we should live our life. First of all, we should know what is the goal. Now somebody may say, well, my goal, I just want to make a lot of money. I just want to have a nice wife and have a few children and have a comfortable house and I'll have a nice steady job for some years and then I'll retire and we'll live happily ever after. Right? Now a lot of people think like that. They think, you know, I just want to live comfortably and be happy ever after. Well, I don't know. It, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I was just reading and somebody sent me an email just this morning and they said there's a terrible solar eclipse going to take place tomorrow. And they said it's very inauspicious. And they said just like there was two world wars, the first world war and the second world war, they, they both were connected with different astrological Change. There were some inauspicious things happened then at that time. And they said this could be a big disaster for the whole world. We don't know what's going to happen in the world tomorrow or the next year. Nobody thought we'd have this pand pandemic. We have no idea what is the future. So, you know, if we're simply thinking about having a happy, comfortable life in this world, it's not very intelligent because we don't know how long we're going to be here and we don't know what's going to happen to the world. And so we take a job and we study and we think I'll get a job, work for a big company, but there's no guarantee. You don't know. We can't tell what the future is going to be. So devotees, we have a different vision of life. We think more about the importance of getting out of this world because this is the material world. This place is called Marjaloka, place of death. Everybody's dying. If they're not dying from COVID, they're dying from cancer. If they're not dying from cancer, they're dying from flu or they're dying from heart attacks or they're dying from diabetes. So many problems. But Everybody's dying, we're all dying. Everyone who takes birth has to die. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. So what's your goal? What do you want to do? Do you want to live forever? No chance. That would be mad. Only foolish demons try to live forever. But a devotee, his goal, we mention here, we think about becoming God conscious. And we want to go back to the spiritual world. We're in the, this material world, place of birth and death. But we can get out of this world and go to the spiritual world. Spiritual world means eternal life, bliss and knowledge. No birth and death. So that's what we're looking for. Should be, right? We want a good life. You can get it not here, not in this world. We have to go to the spiritual world with a spiritual body. Then you can be free of birth and death and old age and disease. You don't have to work in a factory. You don't have to have, you know, terrible, awful jobs working for a big corporation and you never know when they're going to 
uh, sack you, you never know what your future are, they're very unstable. You know, one, of my, one of the devotees, they were, they, he was working for Intel, big, big company, big uh, microchip company in, in Penang, and he was working there. But, you know, they can just get rid of you any time. Work is very unstable. Sometimes they just close the factory and move to some other place, and you're left. You have no job. You have to struggle to find a job. So, that's not very pleasant. Better to become God conscious, work for Krishna. So, what's the process? Process we mentioned, spiritual practice. Spiritual practice. Just like we do yoga. Con yoga means control the mind and senses. We work for, working for Krishna. Often uh, the devotee who's, the devotee who's with me, he will do the cooking. So we take turns. Some, some, sometimes I will cook, sometimes he will cook, sometimes he will go to program, sometimes I can go to program. Spiritual practice, chanting and hearing, nine processes, right? The nine processes, spiritual practice, really it's, you know, waking up early in the morning, going to Mongol Arti, hearing everything, taking morning program, evening program, living with devotees. But then nine processes, nine processes mean nine different kinds of bhakti yoga, beginning with hearing and chanting, and remembering, those are the first, they are, they're the most important, right? Then there's other things, of course, but the first, first three are really, really important, right? That's what we really want to do the most, hearing and chanting and working for Krishna. Working for Krishna. We don't know what Krishna wants you to do. We have to be willing to do it, whatever Krishna wants. That's Bhakti Yoga. Krishna wants me to work in the forest, we work in the forest. If Krishna wants me to work in the city, we can work in the city. We leave it up to Krishna. So, we say, very important, need to exercise the appropriate lifestyle and character in order to be most successful. Yeah, in our life, we, we, sh we have to have the right kind of lifestyle. What should be the lifestyle of a devotee? We should practice simple living and high thinking. Often people today, they don't want that. That's what we should be doing, but they don't want to do it. They, want, they don't want simple living, they want sophisticated, modern living. And they want low thinking. They don't want to elevate themselves to higher thought. They're happy just to be common people. So they don't understand the real value of life. So it's important to have the right lifestyle. Lifestyle, very important. Not that we go out to the club every night and drink and womenize and things like that. That's not lifestyle of devotee. Devotee's lifestyle is not also sitting in front of the television all night, every night, watching television programs. Devotee is very careful to use his time for the service of Krishna, particularly by hearing and chanting. And we also use the technology, just like we're doing today, technology to reach people, to talk to them about Krishna. So this is the lifestyle of the devotee character. So we talk about, we're still talking about habits, lifestyle. Yeah, life, from our lifestyle we'll develop our habits. Habits means our activities and our interests. And, and this will help us to develop our character also. So you have to keep working on it, you know, the, developing the, the right habits is, takes some time. But 
You can do it. We can change. We have some bad habits before becoming devotees. Before becoming devotees, we learn so many bad habits from people who were our elders, who were our superiors. So we have to learn the good habits from the devotees. You have to go and chant. Even you have to go to the record studio. Go and sit in the record studio and chant. But chant wherever you go. So we mention different habits. Habits in ignorance described to be very lazy and confused and no, no, no interest in spiritual knowledge. Sometimes, sometimes you may think about chanting, not very often, very less. But we should think. So that's the mode of, that's the mode of tamas. To be lazy and confused, no purpose in life, you don't know what you're doing, you have bad habits, just want to procrastinate and criticize people and always miserable. That's the mode of ignorance. And the mode of passion, desires, competitive, want to do more than others, want to be better than others. So working very hard, and so anxious to do well, want to get material profit, want to have money, want to live a, a nice life, an opulent life. We think that's the goal of life, that's passion, that's rajas. And in goodness, goodness is what purifies the consciousness. Goodness is cultivating some good knowledge about life. Maybe we're interested in music and the arts, like that. This is a mode of goodness. It's meant to purify our consciousness. And above the mode of goodness, we've got pure goodness or Shuddha Sattva. And Shuddha Sattva, that's the level of devotional service. One who can get to that level, they're an advanced devotee. And you get liberation by coming to the level of Shuddha Sattva. So these different modes are there. You can see goodness, passion, ignorance, and then on the goodness level, there's the uh, pure goodness. Our activities are a result of the decisions we make. And our decisions are ultimately based on the modes we are influenced by. A, vis a vicious cycle. A vicious cycle. We say, oh, it's not fair. If our results are based on the decisions we make. So we decide to do something, but that decision is going to be influenced by the three modes. You know, we did it. We did it. Just because the modes of nature, they told us we should do like that. The modes of nature told me, or they tell us, we can sleep till midday. They can, modes of nature tell us, you don't need to take bath. The modes of nature tell us, oh, you can eat meat, fish and eggs, like that. That's the modes of nature. So we try to stay away from the modes of nature as much as we can. So, modes of nature, we said Krishna's energy, you have to be careful of them. Here's some interesting pictures for you. I hope you can see the screen. Can you see the screen okay? Hare Krishna, Bhagavad Dharma. Can you see the pictures? Hare Krishna. Yes, ma'am. Yes, please, Okay. So you can see up on the top left side, somebody's kitchen. I hope it's not your kitchen. Doesn't look very clean. Anyway, kitchen, kitchen is like the altar. Should be kept very clean. Put everything away, clean everything. Don't keep any cooked food laying around there. Certainly the mice will come, the rats will all come. 
have to be very careful. In the kitchen, we have to be very careful. And then you can see the other pictures. <laughs> you can see a lot of things. Sometimes it's toys, so many toys and bricks and this, and children play with all these things, all these toys. And you can see on the bottom left, someone's office, look at all the files and all the papers and everything. Oh, just horrible, so many things to attend to. In different cases you have to go to, court cases because a worker may have been involved in court case because because I came there, so when they came to see me, they brought Bhagavad Gita, or they brought the, they brought some little money they wanted to give to help to make the expenses lighter. So like that, you can see the top right, so many things, so many objects and jewelry and all, just everything. We say there's enough for everyone's need. But not enough for who? Not enough. There's enough for everyone's greed, but not, not enough for? Anybody know? There's enough for everyone's need, not enough for their? Greed. Greed, right. For their greed, right. There's, you've got enough for what, if it was just based on what we need, we don't need very much. But because we're greedy, we've got so much. You can see so many shoes, so many toys, so many bags, so many mobile phones, so many things. Just cluttering the mind. So try to keep life simple. Wow, you can see the, the stock market. This is like Wall Street or somewhere. You know, the stock market, the people who are working for the different companies, who are doing the work for the companies there, they, are this, they work in the stock market. And they have, they have, uh, they give papers and shares for the company. And if the company starts doing good, then the value of is calling me. Hare Krishna. Mahadam, what? Yes, you can share your screen, Maharaj, again. Okay. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Bhav, like the Hare Krishna, can you, just a minute Prabhu please, you know, Prabhu, I'm trying to share the screen but it says the host disabled, participant screen sharing. Okay, well, I, I, I'm making you the host now. Just a minute Maharaj, I'm making you the host. So please be with us till the time who have not joined, they will join. And uh, we'll take question answers also. So please be with us, have patience. Yes, Pana, you are the host now. You can you can share. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Everyone else, please go on mute.
All right. Everybody can see the slide? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, so that's the mode of passion. You can see the business world, the stock market. You know, everybody's really tense and they're really watching. They're really looking, am I going to make some money or am I going to lose money? Is my market going to crash or is it going to boom? They're really in the mode of passion, a lot of desires, a lot of activity. This. And look at this, the dull, dark alley. You know, this is more the mode of ignorance. You can see also, that even though they put some lights there, you see colored lights, you know. But it's still really dark and you can't see what's going on, what, 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 you, you cannot see where you are, what's really happening. We try to paint, we try to put pictures there, but still it's really dark, miserable. How about this? Where would you put this place? Is this the mode of goodness, passion or ignorance? Rajas, Tamas or Sattvic? Sattvic. What do you think? Everybody agree? Is it Sattvic? Yes. I, yes I think there's a lot of Rajas there. <laughs> I think there's a, quite a bit of passion there, you know. It's, it's not, you know, sattvic should be simple, you know, this is not so simple. Big armchairs, you know, the big sofas for people, the cushions, you know, like that, you know. It, it, there's a lot of emphasis on the body, comfort. You could say it's, at least it's clean and neat and tidy, but Still, there's, a, there's some passion there. It's not really what you would think to be really goodness. But this is goodness. Look at this. Right? We should have nice gardens like this in Mayapur. Actually, Mayapur should have like this. We, we used to have. Maybe in the summer we will have. You can see very nice. The water fountain in the middle and the colored flowers around, nice trees, nature. That's goodness, you know. So we want to develop Mayapur more like this. And here's spiritual, not just the mode of goodness, but Shuddha Sattva, pure goodness. The family, husband and wife with their children, and they're having kirtan in front of their deities, and they've got a nice altar, and they've got Prabhupada there. And you can see they're all dressed nicely, the wife is in a sari, husband's also wearing dhoti kirtan. You see very nice, the children playing the drum and instruments and chanting with them. That's pure goodness, that's transcendental family life. That's how it should be. Yeah, family life is very good when it's like this. This is real Grihastha Ashram. Most people today, they're in Grihamedi Ashram. They're just simply attached and they're all envious of each other. But real family life is like this, it's meant for spiritual advancement. And when, you're, when you practice family life like this, then it's very good, you can really progress. So we want, we encourage devotees like this, to live like this, live peacefully, live happily, have a family, and then you can be very happy and you can go, you can go back to Godhead at the end of life also. Here's some interesting pictures, you can see the, this temple on the top there, that's inside a cave. Maybe, the, I think it might be in Malaysia. In Malaysia they have some temples like this inside the mountain, inside the cave, m worshipping Murga or someone. 
Anyway, I think on the bottom, this is a, this is a Perumal deity, South Indian, South Indian Vaishnavas, Sri Vaishnavas, doing their worship. And here you see the devotees, how the devotees serve Krishna, cooking for Krishna, you can see the devotees working in the kitchen, cooking nice food stuff for Krishna, and then on the bottom, the Maharaji is offering to Krishna, making the plates for the deities. You see they have nice plates silver plates with silver dishes to offer to the deity for Krishna. Okay, uh, fire with the... okay, so the same motto can be applied to anything, not only just we... temples. Haribo, Haribo, please listen. Haribo. Turn off your mic if you're going to talk. So you... Uh, Abhishek, please mute yourself. Abhishek Singh, please mute yourself. So you can have clothes in the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. You can have food in the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. Then you have... People also, our friends, people you associate with, they can be of the same goodness, passion and ignorance. Our office where you're working, maybe goodness, maybe passion, ignorance, you can see. Just like here, we give examples, places in the mode of ignorance, the bar, the dark place, the slaughterhouse, the cinema. Dirty, messy places makes you feel dull and dulls our consciousness. It affects us, it affects the way we think, and the way we act. And passion, passion, just like we saw the trading floor, we saw the stock market, Wall Street or somewhere like that. Stock market, so many people, so passionate people, all tense. And then, so that kind of environment, that kind of atmosphere makes people greedy, passionate, and you get confused and you have more desires, you become more lusty. Doesn't help us. But when you go to the place in goodness, place in goodness means like you go to that park. You go to the park, you go to the mountain, you go to places where you can be peaceful and attentive. And you want to be in pure goodness, then you can go to temple. Right? We say, before, before 1 p.m. you should go, because 1 p.m. temple will close. Lunchtime it will close, right? In the afternoon close, open again 4 o'clock. So that you can see the different modes of nature. We want to cultivate the mode of goodness. The mode of goodness is much better for us. Because from the mode of goodness, then we can go on to pure goodness. So that's very important for us. Okay, so we'll stop here. We'll take some questions. Who's got the questions? Uh, if you like to continue, you can continue next uh, five, five, ten minutes. Then you can take question if you, if you want. Okay, five minutes. Okay, so we'll show here the race. We said trap, right? T for trial and race. Race competition between the modes. Sometimes the mode of goodness is prominent. Sometimes goodness is conquered by passion and sometimes even passion and goodness are conquered by ignorance. There's always a competition going on between the three modes. Just like these horses, 
they're running. One is running, each one is running, they want to be the fastest. They want to win the first prize. So the same way, the modes of nature, there's competition. Which one is supreme? Goodness is supreme or passion is supreme or ignorance is supreme? This is described in the Bhagavad Gita, verse number 10. There's always this competition going on. So it's not enough just to be in the mode of goodness, because any time you can be overcome by passion or ignorance. And you may think you can be in the mode of passion. Passion can also be overcome by ignorance. Ignorance can also be overcome by passion. It changes, the modes of nature change. You can't just think you're going to be in one mode. It's going to change. We say here the modes are fluctuating different times in our life. Sometimes when we're very young, very passionate, and then as you get a bit older, as you get older you become a bit lazy and lethargic like that. And sometimes the internals affect the external. Internal means what we're thinking, what our moods are, and it affects how we live, where we are. And, but the externals also affect the internal. Where we go, who we're with, they affect what happens within our body, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, our emotions. So this is all due to the modes, different time, everything changed. But goodness is the platform. Krishna says, live a life of goodness. But it still implicates one to the law of karma. We're still in the modes of karma. We're still under the material nature, even though we're in goodness. So we show the benefits of being in goodness. Better health, better achievement, because you'll think better. Better knowledge and wisdom will be happier, will be more peaceful and more satisfied and we'll have a much better character if we're in the mode of goodness. We want to cultivate good qualities, right? We want to be, have good, good, good nature, virtuous, we should be virtuous people. We should show our integrity, our character, our good qualities. People in the mode of passion and ignorance, they don't have good qualities. All sinful, lazy people, dirty people, always use bad language, and always complaining and never can do anything, no good results in their life, no success. But people in the mode of goodness, they do much better because they have control, they have some control over their mind and senses. So use the mode of goodness as a springboard to elevate ourselves to the spiritual platform, right? That's, it. That's why the mode of goodness is so much better, because from the mode of goodness then it's not very far to go into transcendence. But if you're in the mode of passion and ignorance, you're away down there, you have to spring up very big 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 way, a big distance. You have to come up a long way to come up to transcendence. So it's much better to cultivate the mode of goodness. The mode of goodness, eat good food, natural food, healthy food. Oh, wait, where is it? Action in the modes. Oh, here, right? Here you can see the three modes. Hmm? The general nature in the mode of ignorance, delusion. Passion, lusty, a lot of desires. And goodness, very positive actions. You do good work, you get good karma. And pure goodness, spiritual, no karma. Illuminating. And you can see the different natures through the modes. And psychological, what kind of person is it? In the mode of ignorance, is helpless. Oh, I can't do anything. Oh, I'm so, oh, I'm, I'm, uh, they're so useless people. They're helpless. They can't do anything good for society. And they're full of lamentation, 
addicted to sleep, sleep so much, they have, but at the same time they have so many hopes what they're going to do. Sometimes they get very violent and they like to take advantage of others. They're like parasites. The parasite will take advantage, live off others. And that's a parasite. They can't do anything themselves, they just depend on others. You know, you've got one girl, maybe the sister, she works in a good job and she makes money and the brother's a lazy guy, doesn't do anything, he always comes to his sister to try to get money. Or he tries to take money from his parents who are very old and they feel sorry for him and they give him money and he takes the money and goes smokes and drinks and loses it all. So that's the mode of ignorance. The mode of passion, active, working hard. Maybe he's got three jobs, a job in the day, a job at night and a job on the weekend. But always in anxiety, always struggling, I don't have enough, I have to get more, I need more money, I haven't got enough, like this. So it's a mode of passion. But in the mode of goodness, how is the person? He's happy. He's got some knowledge, he understands a little bit about the goal of life. He's got some knowledge about religion, about dharma. So he's happy. But if you're in the mode of pure goodness, then spiritual happiness. Because you're connected to Krishna. So what is the result from the modes of nature? You can see the mode of ignorance, no result. Just foolishness, madness, nonsense, nothing to show, no good thing. The mode of passion, the result is misery and more greed. If they're successful, they still don't have enough, they want more. But if someone's in the mode of goodness, they've got some knowledge and they're happy, they're, they're, they're actually feeling good. But if you're in pure goodness, then you have spiritual consciousness. You understand you're not the body, you understand your soul, part and parcel of Krishna, and you engage in devotional service. So this is the results of the three modes. Somebody dies in the mode of ignorance, they'll go to the lower species of life. They'll become a tree, or a dog, or a pig, or they'll go to hell, even they'll go to Yamaraj and be punished in hellish planets. If somebody dies in the mode of passion, if you die in the mode of passion, you come back here on this planet. Somebody dies in the mode of goodness, they can go to heaven, Swarga Loka. And somebody dies in pure consciousness, they can go back to Godhead, back to Krishna. Okay, we'll stop here, Mahadam. Mahadam. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for your wonderful class, inspiring class. With beautiful, uh, uh, very nice slide, Maharaj, very inspiring. Personally, I am. Uh, so, Maharaj, first question is, yeah. Maharaj, are you able to hear me? Yes. Maharaj, first question. Uh, we are staying in the model, modern world where life is very fast. So is it possible to live uh, life in goodness or, uh, or pure goodness life like spiritual life along with our study life or working life? Is it possible to live a life in pure goodness? Or goodness. Goodness of pure goodness, uh, and spiritual life, uh, and study, the study life, or working life. It's possible. If possible, then how? You have to cultivate the prop, what you have to know, what is the mode of goodness and how to cultivate the mode of goodness, what is the nature of the mode of goodness. You have to understand that. 
You have to know what kind of diet your people have, people have in the mode of goodness. You have to know what kind of lifestyle people in the mode of goodness to have. I'm just, I'm just trying to explain that to you. You know, I'm just trying to explain how you should be. People in the mode of goodness, you wake up early in the morning. People in the mode of goodness, they'll wake up early in the morning. And they'll sleep early at night, they'll wake up early in the morning. People in the mode of passion, they'll live like this, like these pictures. People in the mode of passion, they, they're like this, they go to the, these places all day, they're in these places all day with people yelling and shouting. So different environments, will, different places will affect you. But you can see here, somebody is a devotee, so every evening or every morning even before they go to work, the family will come together and they'll have a kirtan and chant the holy name. And the wife will cook and she'll offer the food on the altar to the deities. So that is the mode of goodness, pure goodness actually. That is the mode of pure goodness, that is transcendental living. Many devotees do like this. They have jobs, they go to work, they have a family, but their home is like this. They do devotion in their home. So every, if every morning you start the day chanting Hare Krishna and worshipping Krishna, then you can go to work. And then you have, a, you, know, you have a good consciousness to go through the work. Because you've been, you've been working, you've been... Uh, you, you had a good start to the day, you, you chanted and you heard about Krishna, you took prasadam. You know, devotee only wants to eat prasadam. They don't want to waste their time going to cinema, drinking, gambling, like that. They don't worry about these things. Right? Uh, Maharaj, I am uh, reading the second question. So, meanwhile, uh, uh, we will give first, uh, next five minutes for uh, directly you can ask question. We have already taken some questions. So, any question connected with today's topic, uh, you can directly ask after this question. And then uh, we will take the other question which we have already, you have sent it. So, Maharaj, our second question is, that uh, we are currently studying in engineering colleges or medical colleges. So we are, we are means are now in need of job and money. So how much it is necessary, uh, how much it is, it, it is necessary for us to cultivate, uh, cultivate goodness or pure goodness and, and spiritual life uh, uh, current, uh, currently? Oh, it's absolutely essential. It's essential because if you don't cultivate Krishna consciousness, if you don't cultivate the mode of goodness, if you simply live like an, uh, you know, ordinary materialistic people in the, uh, cultivating the mode of ignorance and passion, next life, then you don't know where you will take birth. You may become an animal. I said you may go to the lower species of life. So that's a danger. If you think about the future, you should think about where are you going to go in the future. So if, if we live like animals in this life, next life we will become an animal. You know, just like here in Mayapur, there are many jackals. We see these jackals every day, every night they come out. So. You know, these jackals are spirit souls. So you have to be very careful. The spirit soul, now we have a human body, we have to take advantage of the human body. If you read the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the fifth canto it describes how the demigods, they want to take a birth here in India, in Bharat Varsha. Because this is the best place to go back to Godhead. So the, even the demigods, they want to come in. But people here, they're so foolish, they're thinking, I want to become a demigod. I would, I would like to go to heaven. I would like to enjoy in the heavenly planets. Yeah, you can go to the heavenly planets. If you do a lot of pious activity, you can go there to heaven. 
but you can't stay there. You have to come back. When you finish your pious activities, you'll come back. So we should understand what is the real goal of life. The real goal of life is to go beyond this material world, to get out of the wheel of birth and death and to go back to Godhead. Is it clear? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you very much for your Maharaj, very nice answer. So our next question, anybody like to directly ask question, you can unmute yourself and ask the question if it is connection with today's class. So we have three, four minutes. If you can directly ask, so uh, we request the boys, you can ask question. Uh, otherwise we'll take, if it is not there, we'll take the, we have already uh, like, uh, uh, receive questions. Any question from today's class, you can directly ask, unmute yourself and ask the question. It will be very nice. We have asked the two questions in connection with the class. Any other question? Hare Krishna Guruji. Hare Krishna. Uh, actually, uh, there is some question uh, of mine. Mm. Yes. Uh, we know that uh, we come alone, uh, we have come alone to the earth and will go alone. That is the truth. But uh, sometimes it is called that we should not be attached to anyone. Uh, and we think and we feel it that for the one or other moment we do it. And after the another moment, we feel that there is some attachment and we should be attached to everyone. Then what should be done? It is that we should be attached to everyone, every living and we should care. And or we should be living in our own and we should be thinking that uh, it is not the world to be attached to everyone, what should we do? Well, we should understand properly the identity of everyone. You should understand who are these people you are attached to, that they are all souls, they are all spirit souls in a material body. We become attached to the material body. Hello? Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Let us uh, finish the answer, then, then you ask question. Yeah, we are attached to the material body. Material body is only the dress of the person. You want to become attached to the proper person, that's the soul in the body. So you have to recognize who is the person. They're not the body. The body is only the dress. You have to understand the person within the body, the soul. And that soul is a part of Krishna. So our attachment to them is not wrong, but the thing is, if we're attached to the body, then that's going to be, that's ignorance. Because they're not the body. They're only, the body is only their dress. Just like if somebody's drowning and you go and save their jacket. You know, that's not the person. Why didn't you save the person? So you have to understand who is the person. The person, we're all souls living in a body. And we should be attached to the soul. And that soul is a part of Krishna. So if you develop your attachment for Krishna, then that is attachment to all living entities. Because we heard today, Krishna said, he is the seed-giving father of all living entities. So you're thinking your father, you're thinking your father is the husband of your mother, but actually your real father is Krishna. Krishna is the father of all, the, all living entities, all souls, they all come from Krishna. So we have to develop the attachment for Krishna, and in that way we will love everyone and be attached to everyone but not on the basis of the body, but on the basis of the soul. So you have to get some pu purification to do that. You need to chant Hare Krishna mantra. 
You need to read the Bhagavad Gita and understand more about the identity of everyone, that we're not the body, we're all souls. Then it's good, then you can be attached to them properly. All right? Okay. It's a very, thank you, thank very, you so much. Thank you for your question. Very nice, Madhiji. Hare Krishna. Okay, next question. Hi, uh, yes, me. Sir, yes. Prabhuji, there is a relation in other, uh, that is my father, mother, and there is also a relation in Swarloka or Bakunda. That is like uh, back, uh, material nature, my mother, sister, like. What is the question? There is a relation in material nature, uh, material platform that is my mother, sister, brother, friends. So my question is there is also a relation in Swarloka or Pekukunda like material platform? There's relationship on the spiritual platform, not on the material platform. The spiritual platform, just like I was explaining to the young lady in the last question, that we're not the body, we're souls. So in the spiritual world, we have spiritual bodies. So there are relationships between the spiritual bodies. Yeah. There are families, there are husbands and wives, but everyone has a spiritual body, not a material body. They don't have, they don't have lust and they don't have greed like what we have here. Those things are not there in the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, everyone is pure and they're happy. Here in this world, people are not happy. They're all miserable, they're all, we're all suffering. But in the spiritual world, everyone is happy. They're not greedy, they're not lusty. They don't become angry. They have good qualities. And they live together peacefully and happily. Even though they may have families, they may have husbands, you have husbands and wives. But people are happy. There's no divorce, there's no quarreling and arguing. Everyone is happy in the service of Krishna. That's the nature of the spiritual world. So you should be eager to hear about the spiritual world. You should read the books. You should read books like Bhagavad Gita. Help you to understand. I have a question, sir. Yes? What's your question? Sir, does... Sir, does association affect the mood of nature? Yes, it does. That's what we said today. Association does. If you go to the stock market, it's the mode of passion. You'll also become passionate. You live in the city, it's the mode of passion. You become passionate. You live in the countryside, it's more the mode of goodness. You become more pure, more in the mode of goodness. You live in the bar, you work in the bar or in the, you know, some gambling casino or something, it's a mode of ignorance. You become affected by the environment. Okay, thank you, sir. Our next question? Yes. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> why, why do we get jealous of someone's success or someone's belongings.
हरे कृष्णा यस महाराज जस पर सो वी रिक्वेस्ट द कोऑर्डिनेटर्स टू इंस्पायर द बॉयज और हेल्प द बॉयज टू जॉइन अगेन सो बिकॉज़ ऑफ 40 मिनट्स गॉट ओवर सो वी हैव आवर लास्ट सेशन एंड वी आर टेकिंग योर अटेंडेंस सो प्लीज बी विद अस सो द क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम मोहित आई रीड अगेन व्हाई व्हाई डू वी गेट jealous of someone success or someone's belongings though we know that we can achieve it if we try to be sincere and more focus in life this the, question is from mohit maharaj yes we this is the cause of our being in the material world because we are envious of others we have the desire to become ourselves better than others someone successful we want to be suc more successful than them so envy is the nature of people in the material world they're always competing and envious of each other someone does well we don't appreciate it we will try to minimize it make it look small there's a story one man was talking about one man was talking to another man he was telling him he said my son is a high court judge so the other man was not he the other man was envious so he said well he may be a high court judge but i don't think he gets the salary of a high court judge <laughs> so that's envy you try to you know minimize the fact that the man's son was a high court judge so we want to be very careful about this envy that we want to purify that envy instead of being jealous and envious of others we want to see the good in others we're envious then in this world we're all envious because ultimately we're all envious of krishna because krishna is bhagavan krishna has the most he has so many beautiful ladies all serving him and he has so much wealth and he has so much strength and he has so much knowledge and at the same time he's so good looking and he's so detached from it all so we're envious of krishna and that enviousness of krishna reflects to others that we are envious of other people also but if we want to go back to godhead we want to go back to krishna we have to develop love for krishna so we have to change that envy to love instead of seeing bad we should see good in others and you have to develop the quality to see good in krishna and to think how wonderful krishna is that krishna is so great so great i'm so lucky to be his servant to be a Hallelujah. servant to be a servant of a servant yes do you have a question Uh, next question maharaj yes uh, next question is from nayan in kali yuga we see many times people perform right activity especially spiritual practices but unfortunately they are discouraged by people in general other and somebody does wrong activity wrong activity how can we deal with such situation when we are practicing spiritual life from netaji subhash engineering college i haven't got the question fully yet because the voice was breaking can you repeat it for me hari bo yes maharaj in kali yuga we see many times people maraj can you hear me sometimes 
Sometimes I can hear you. Yeah? In Kali Yuga, we hear? Haribo? In Kali Yuga, we see many times people perform right activities. Can you hear me, Maharaj? Yes, in Kali Yuga, we hear people perform right activities. Hare Krishna. I can hear you. Go ahead, keep speaking. Especially spiritual practices. Yes. But unfortunately, they are discouraged by people in general. Yes. On other hand, on other hand, if somebody does wrong activities, nobody is going to protest or facing such situation. Well, this is the nature of the material world. You have to have strong faith that what you're doing is the right thing. That when you perform devotional service, you have to have faith that this is what Krishna wants us to do. This is the proper behavior, the proper lifestyle. You're doing the proper activities. And the people who are not doing devotional service, who are engaging in all the material sinful activities, they are creating their own problems. They have no good future. They have no hope for a better life because they're engaged in so many abominable activities. But a devotee is convinced that what he's doing is right. He knows the proper standard of behavior. He knows what the proper lifestyle should be. And so he does it. So faith is very important. And we get faith when we read the scriptures and we get faith also by good association. If you can associate with people who have strong faith, then it can also help you to have strong faith. But if you associate with people who are atheistic, who are materialistic and very sinful, then they will also affect you by their association. They can, they can influence your thinking and they can cause your own degradation also. You, can, you may develop like them, the bad habits they have. Sinful people like to see other people also sinful. But devotee must be convinced what he's doing is right. And he won't let anybody disturb him. He's convinced to serve Krishna. All right. Well, next question, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes. Next question. Maharaj, next, next question, Maharaj. Uh huh. Uh, when, when we are chanting, question from Subhamai Barman. So, when we are chanting, uh, mind is distracted in so many different thoughts and allurement. So, uh, how? The holy name can relieve our mind. We have, to, we have to chant with proper attention on the holy name. The important thing is to hear. When you chant, hear. Hear carefully. Hear the holy name very carefully. Listen closely. You should try to chant loudly also. Then you can hear better. And it's also good for you to get some knowledge about the nature of the Holy Name, to understand the philosophy of the Holy Name and behind this chanting. Then that will help your chanting to have more effect. It's also good to chant with devotees. And the best place to chant the Holy Name is in the temple and try to chant in front of the deities. So you go to a temple where there's a deity and you can stand there in front of the deities and chant the holy name. It's very powerful. If you were to do that every day, you become very strong devotee. But we chant, we allow ourselves to think about so many mundane things, we allow the mind to wander. You have to control the mind, you have to bring the mind back. 
and fix the mind on the Lord. Remember, you're calling to Krishna. And Prabhupada said, when we chant, our, our chanting should be like a child calling for the mother. Just like the young child always calls for the mother. And as soon as the mother comes in, the child just stops crying. The mother picks up the child and hugs the child. The child's happy. And so we're separated from Krishna. So our chanting is the address to the Lord. We are calling Lord Krishna, please come and pick me up. Please engage me in your service. Please accept me. Please give me the strength to serve you. So our chanting is a prayer and it's also the answer to our prayers. So we have, when we chant, we have to have a prayerful mood and we have to understand Krishna is listening, Krishna is hearing and we should try to chant with the feeling from the heart, with love, with devotion because it's devotion that Krishna wants. Krishna is conquered by pure loving devotion. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, my next question, Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, uh, is it necessary to chant uh, 16 round every day? Yes, it is necessary. If you don't chant 16 rounds every day, you cannot be initiated. Anybody who wants to be initiated, they must chant at least 16 rounds. Why? Why 16 rounds? Well, 16 rounds will take you about minimum two hours to chant. So you have to be willing to spend about two hours focusing, meditating on the holy name of Krishna. Now two hours is not a lot. Every day we have 24 hours. So to spend two hours chanting the holy name of Krishna it's not a waste of time, it's the greatest benefit. So you have to be willing to really do this and to do it with sincerity and devotion. And then Krishna can reveal everything to you through the holy name. You may say, why 16 rounds? Just like teacher says, write out this word 10 times. Sometimes you have to write out a word you don't know, write it out ten times. So the same way Prabhupada said to all right, chant Hare Krishna mantra, sixteen rounds. And then this way you get to know it. It's our, it's our meditation on the holy, on Lord Krishna Himself. Lord Krishna is not different from the name. So when we chant Krishna's name, Lord Krishna can appear in the holy name, through the holy name we can feel the presence of Krishna. So this chanting is very important. It's the most important activity of the devotee. And the chanting of 16 rounds is the most important instruction given to us by Srila Prabhupada. So we have to do it very carefully, and very sincerely. Okay? Any other question? Yes, Maharaj. So, question from Deva Jyoti from Netaji Shubhash. What is the ultimate purpose of the whole universe? Well, the whole universe is whole. What is the ultimate purpose of whole universe? The whole material world is arranged for the conditioned souls so that they can come here and be separate from Krishna. Because we are, we're all rebellious, we're all against Krishna. We, we, so we come to this world and we can try to be ourselves, the controller. We can, be our, we can be the independent enjoyer instead of surrendering to Krishna. In the spiritual world, everyone is surrendered. So the people who are not surrendered, they come here to this material world. And in this material world, all the unsurrendered souls are struggling with the modes of nature. And we're suffering and enjoying in different ways according to our karma. That's the purpose of the material world, to allow us to be independent of Krishna.
Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, next question, Maharaj. Uh, from Bikas. We have to do something that we don't want to do. If doing the work, if doing the work, so could be a problem uh, us or if doing that work if uh, we and others uh, will be problem in future so uh, so so uh, should we do that uh, especially in the situation where if we do if we don't do that then uh, then uh, some other people will create problem to us. What to do in such situation? People will make problem. Is the question is clear, Maharaj? No. <laughs> Can you say it again? Uh, question is, Maharaj, we are forced to do something which we are we are forced to do something by some people which we do not like to do but if we don't uh, do that then then the people those are forcing they will create trouble to our life oh okay especially like uh, like taking bribe so, so what to do in such situation by taking what Taking drive? Taking bribe, Maharaj. Oh, taking bribe. Oh. <laughs> yes. Bribe. Ah, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, what to do? It's very difficult sometimes, these situations. If you don't take, if you don't take the bribe, then people can give you a hard time. Uh, you definitely want to be careful though, you're dealing with material nature, if you take money from people, you become obliged to them. We sh it's better to keep your own integrity, to keep your own good character intact, because if we do take money from other people, it does, it puts you in a difficult situation in the future. It means that he'll come again in the future, he'll want you to take money and he may bring other people in the future also and you have to give them all, take money from all of them. It's not a good idea. You can take a lot of bribes and then you can end up with a lot of enemies. People will hate you. We had one devotee in the Philippines, he was a tax officer very senior man in the in the government tax officer and he took a lot of bribes and he ended up, the, the, he got murdered one day some of these people who he was you know he was dealing with they just came by and, and they shot him dead he was driving his car and they shot him and killed him so you got to be very careful you know you start taking money from people start taking bribes and so on from people you put yourself into more and more difficulties, it's very hard to get out of that situation. So it may be difficult in the beginning, but just make it clear to people that you don't take bribes, that you're not interested to get money from them. Better to keep your honesty, to be honest, rather than to be corrupt and take bribes from people. That's what I think. Just simply tell them frankly that, I'm sorry, I, I don't take bribes, I don't want your money. When you take money like that, it's, it's, it's got karma to it. You take that money for yourself, it's got karma to it. And that karma will come back on you. So you have to be very careful. People want you to do things. Yeah, they may want, want you to do it, but you don't have to be their slave. You have to keep your own qualities. Don't allow yourself to be degraded by the influence of others. Keep your standards.
moral principles, right? Cleanliness, mercy, austerity, truthfulness, satyam, sojam, daya, tapa. So you've got to be truthful and honest with qualities of a devotee. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, next question, Maharaj, uh, from Pritam Pradhan. Yes. Uh, how to how to be always self-aware? Just keep chanting Hare Krishna. If you're always chanting Hare Krishna and remembering Krishna, then you'll be self-aware. No other way. No other way. Orkai Rastane, right? There's only one way, chanting Hare Krishna. Then you can be self-aware. Any other question? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, question from Devolina Banerjee. In some situation of my life, I know that I am right and I, I proved in future that I was right. But people think that all of my, uh, people think that, uh, that all of my fault and I am wrong. Why it happened? Such situation. Well, the message is your karma. You should think it's your karma, it's the arrangement of Krishna. Maybe in the past the th same situation was reversed and now Krishna is paying you back. Karma is coming back to you, something which happened in the past. Nothing is by chance. Everything is the arrangement of Krishna. The reason for it must have, you, you should think you must have done something wrong to these people in the past and now it's coming back on you. So like that, you have to see it as being your fault and be tolerant. Understand, okay, let's, let's get rid of that karma. Just like they say, uh, there's a saying, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But if we follow that principle, then everybody will go blind and nobody will have any teeth. So don't try to get revenge for anything people do to you. Just tolerate. Turn the other cheek. Just tolerate. Just put up with it and understand this is due to karma. And go on with your duty. Do what you're supposed to do. Don't worry. Don't be so attached to being right. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, thank you, Maharaj, for your wonderful association. So, so before we end, uh, uh, we have one question, Maharaj. Uh, 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 so question is, Maharaj, that uh, as you came in your Krishna consciousness very down, so and you are practicing Krishna consciousness the last 50 years, so what is your message uh, for all the youths uh, sitting here? Well, my message for all of you is that you please try to understand this Krishna conscious philosophy and see how it can improve your own life. We need to get this kind of education, spiritual education. Spiritual education is not provided by the governments in the world today. The governments are all secular, they don't give spiritual knowledge. You need to get this education. It's very important, very vital for your well-being, to develop your character, to cultivate good qualities. You need to hear Krishna consciousness, this knowledge of Krishna consciousness. It will be the greatest benefit to you. So please take it very seriously. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada wanted so much that young people should be given the opportunity for this Krishna. Uh, there is one question. Uh, uh, 
Well, there is one question. I am just reading uh, reading the question because the devotee is asking. Uh, the question is, Maharaj, we know that Karna lost from his mother Kunti when he was baby. We know that DNA is one and only test which proves who is the son of the who is the son of which father. Five thousand years ago, there was no DNA test. Then, how Mother Kunti came to know that Karna was his lost child? Question from Jai Sarkar. Mother Kunti knew her lost child because when the child was born, he was born with kavachas. He was born <laughs> with the gold on the body, right? He had kavacha on his ears and on his, uh, uh, he, he had these features, so mother knew the child all right. She, did, she gave birth, so she saw the special features of that child, how he had all these, he had these qualities, he had these, well, he had these marks, this, this kavacha on him from birth. So, she could recognize her child without DNA. And she knew also the couple, she'd put the child on the basket and put the child down the river. So she would hear later on who had found the child and who was bringing up the child. And, and she would hear about the wonderful qualities. Yes. Before we end, uh, uh, so uh, I would like.